Here is the uh, mortgage pattern example for the foreclosure data. And just so that you understand what we're doing, so the nearest neighbor distance for that point is 1. For this point, well, it's also 1, or it's that 1. Uh, for this point over here, the nearest neighbor is 2 cells away. For over here, it's 1 cell away. So for each point on this map, here the nearest neighbor, that is square root 2, the distance, because you've got 1 down and 1 across. So for each point on this map, we are going to calculate this nearest neighbor uh, distance, and we take the mean of all of those nearest neighbor distances, and that's our NND bar. Okay? So remember, NND bar equals NND i, oh sorry, the sum of NND i over n. So we're just taking the average NND i. So the null hypothesis in this case is always that NND bar equals NND bar r. We're always going to assume that the point pattern is random, and then we're going to let the statistics tell us whether or not there is in fact some kind of spatial pattern in there, some which is going to be evidence that there's some kind of process, a social or economic or environmental process, that's causing these point patterns to appear in a non-random spatial pattern. So that's the null and alternative. In this case, we are looking for clustered. So it's a left tail test. We want NND bar to be less than what we, would, what we see when the data are random. And remember, that's because in the clustered case, all the points can be at one location, which is going to have a very small average nearest neighbor distance. So we calculate from the data a mean NND, which is 1.04. We calculate the NND bar R. So we had 1 over 2 root density. Density in that case is being uh, calculated as 40 over 100. That's because we have 40 points and the area is 10 by 10. So we've got 10 in this direction, 10 in that direction. So the area of this, of this grid is 100. And we can calculate NND bar R and then standard error of, an, of the uh, NND bar. And now all we're going to have to do is calculate the z-score. Uh, we can also calculate the R, that, that standardized ratio of NND bar over the random case. And we see that actually we get an R of 1.32. And we saw that larger R's, R's greater than 1, that implies uniformity. So already we see there's something fishy going on. So let's do a test and we can use the, the z-score. So we just calculate the z-score and we find that the z-score is equal to 3.91. Uh, 3.91, so remember, uh, we wanted to do a left tail test, right? We wanted to do a left tail test to see if the data are clustered. So in that case, we were looking with an alpha of 10% all on the left tail. So this is going to be the rejection zone over here. And we find that our test statistic is actually way out over here in the right tail. So we reject, we can't reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we don't have evidence that, that, that the NND is not random. But in fact, this is such an unusually high z-score in the opposite direction, this is actually a lot of evidence that the data are, are dispersed or uniform.